Epic Movie Theater here today, I'm going to explain a comedy and horror film called Fresh Meat Spoilers. Ahead. Watch out and take care at St. Agnes Boarding School for young Maori ladies. The deputy head girl, Rena Crane is known for her excellent attitude and effort. She's into girls and doesn't hesitate to show her interest in one of her classmates. Kiri while they're taking a shower later, Rena is picked up by her father at the port. Hemi is an associate professor who has five papers and three books, all of which are unpublished. Meanwhile, Rena's mother and celebrity chef, Margaret shoots an episode for her show. Unlike her husband, she has published 15 cookbooks and one autobiography on the road. A group of criminals is being transported in a van. One of them, Richie Tan, beats up the others. The guards don't mind but they know that Richie is notorious for killing kidnapping and selling fruit without the license. Unfortunately, they're unaware that a vehicle has started following them when the guards make a quick stop. The people in the other car watch them carefully. Richie's girlfriend, Gigi stays in the vehicle with Richie's brother Polly while Johnny goes out to put some dynamite on the police van. However, he accidentally lights the dynamite's wicks with his cigarette. So he quickly drops and kicks them under the van. Once the dynamite explode, the criminals inside the police van get thrown around one guy's handcuffs breaks. And while it also happens to Richie, he sustains an open fracture as the van flips. Johnny is sent flying in the air. As soon as he lands on the ground, Polly gets out of the car and repeatedly shoots at the guards inside the store. Then Polly runs out of bullets. So Gigi, an ex-army cadet, takes her shotgun to back up Polly. She mercilessly shoots the guards before checking on Richie who can't wait to get out of there. Concurrently, Hemi and Rena finally get home. They see Margaret filming in the kitchen where she also feeds her guest Bruce. After that, the crew assists Bruce while Margaret greets Rena on the road. Everyone panics because of Richie's injured hand. But all Gigi can do is wrap a bandage around it before forcing his bones back in place. Johnny also gives him morphine and drives recklessly infuriating Richie after getting changed, goes to the kitchen and finds a severed hand in the refrigerator. Rena takes it out and asks her parents if it's a fake but Margaret reveals they now eat people understandably. This revelation causes Rena to scream. At the same time, Richie's group decides to go into the crane's garage to hide from the cops. They almost hit Rena as she runs away. But her father grabs her to the side while Johnny swerves and hits his car afterward. Gigi comes out of the car and hits Rena and Hemi. Margaret sees what's happening but Polly quickly closes the garage door. The armed criminals take the family to the living room where Polly fires a warning shot when Margaret spits on Johnny outside two cops ride to chop her to search for Richie's group. As Polly and Gigi check the rooms, Johnny tends to Richie's wound upstairs. Gigi sees Rena's drawings and enters another bedroom where she gets startled after opening the closet. Gigi finds a cricket uniform and a bat. So she heads downstairs and grabs Margaret by the hair demanding to know where her son is. Hemi tells the criminals that their son Glenn is at his cricket game, assuring them that no one else is in the house, but Glenn soon arrives and when Polly strikes him with his gun, Hemi hits Johnny before trying to grab Gigi's shotgun. Hemi almost shoots Polly struggling to take the gun away from Gigi. It isn't long before more shots are fired. But Gigi eventually subdues Hemi and hits him in the face with her gun before threatening to shoot him and his family because of what happened. Richie wants to split up the cranes. He decides to take Rena while Polly volunteers to deal with Hemi. Then Richie instructs Gigi to take Glenn and orders Johnny to handle Margaret in four separate rooms. The criminals try to intimidate the cranes in the home office. Hemi says the origins of the Maori take them back to the highlands of Taiwan where he believes Polly is from in the kitchen. Johnny puts down his gun and talks to Margaret about her cookbook. He doesn't notice the severed hand that Margaret with a towel for. He's too busy flirting with the married lady upstairs. Richie orders Rena to remove his pants. 
Rena then offers to give him a good time and Richie happily accepts Rena lends Richie her undergarments and removes her clothes as she dances for him only to attack him with her poi back in the kitchen. Johnny finally discovers the hand and touches it. So Margaret grabs his hand and shoves it down the garbage disposal unit. Unfortunately, only the severed hand gets shredded and Johnny manages to away from her at the same time in his bedroom. Glenn secretly takes a pencil back in the home office. Polly shoots Hemi when he tries to come at him in her room. Rena continues to beat up Richie, but the guy overpowers her and gets on top of her. So Rena bites his manhood, prompting Gigi to move and take Glenn when she hears her boyfriend scream. Rena points Richie's gun at him but Gigi arrives and demands her to put it down bleeding. Richie snatches the firearm from Rena and eventually takes a seat. Gigi asks what happened. Richie says, Rena came onto him and made him wear her undergarments. In this belief, Gigi tells Rena to throw Richie his clothes before she returns hers downstairs. Polly repeatedly kicks an unconscious Hemi but Hemi pulls his leg and makes him lose his balance. Scared Poi shoots Hemi again. But when he discovers he's hitting the man's amulet, he decides to shoot his hand. Pissed. Polly orders the gang to bring the cranes to the living room. As they go down, Rena talks to Glenn about the severed hand, but her brother isn't surprised and reveals that their father is reviving one of the 18th century post-colonial religions. Glenn talks about the Solomon kites and eating people saying Hemi initiated him into the religion while Rena was away. Once they go to the living room, Glenn admits to Rena that the pork pies weren't actually poor. Glenn proudly says he helped her father find the meat causing Rena to cry and throw up upon seeing this. Gigi takes Rena to the bathroom and helps her clean herself up. Meanwhile, Richie gets up on the sink to wash his bleeding member before injecting himself with morphine. Then Richie heads to the living room and orders Johnny to kill the cranes which causes tension. However, Gigi and Rena soon join them and Gigi asks the guys to relax. Starving. Polly asks Margaret for food. So Glenn tells him to get some in the pantry. At that moment, Rena talks to her parents about their cannibalism, but they don't feel bad at all in the kitchen. Polly finds a trapdoor leading to a basement and investigates. Unfortunately, he immediately gets killed by a booby trap in the living. Gigi decides to look for Polly while Hemi and Glenn start praying. Annoyed Johnny covers their mouths with tape. Also silencing Rena and Margaret. Moments later, Gigi returns and says the cops are there also informing her group, she can't find Polly. She asks Rena to get up and removes the tape covering her mouth before making her answer the door. Officer Nisbet greets Rena and requests her to stay inside with her family since there are criminals at large in their area. Nisbet then enters the house to make sure is okay. And when he finds a hole in the wall, Rena just tells him her parents fought before they went out. It isn't long before Nisbet notices the trap door and opens it, finding blood on the stairs and realizing something is wrong with no other choice. Gigi tries shooting Nisbet but she's run out of bullets. Nisbet quickly uses his pepper spray on Gigi and fights her and as the officer instructs Rena to call 111, they also accidentally hit Johnny concurrently in the hallway. Hemi tries to free Margaret instead of calling for help. Rena splashes Gigi's face with milk to help with the pain caused by the pepper spray. Sad to say Johnny takes that opportunity to shoot a distracted Nisbet afterward. Gigi beats up Johnny for not immediately helping her. She also says she's taking Johnny's gun and orders him to put Nies Bet's body in the garage. Then Gigi talks to Richie about their future. Rena says she knows Richie doesn't like Gigi pissing the guy off. Richie demands to know why Rena is still alive. So Gigi says she likes her and Rena urges her to stand up to her boyfriend. Getting impatient. Richie threatens to shoot Rena, but Gigi points her gun at him and tells him to leave the girl alone. Still, Richie refuses to be intimidated and says Gigi will never find her daughter if she kills him. 
But Gigi is already fed up and blows his head off as she changes her clothes. Gigi shares with Rina that Richie took her daughter and promised to give her back if she was good to him outside. Johnny finds a Glenn's car and gets inside it but he hears a noise from the back. Curious, Johnny gets out and opens the trunk only to be startled when a tied-up man comes out and tries to escape as a man's mouth is also covered. So he doesn't get the chance to talk. As Johnny repeatedly hits him with a tire iron, then Johnny gets in the car again. But when Gigi comes out with Rena and asks if he's going somewhere, he tries to hit them, the girls avoid the oncoming vehicle and Gigi quickly jumps into the driver's seat to stop Johnny from leaving. Johnny runs over the body on the ground several times as he attempts to get rid of Gigi successfully hurling her into the stack of boxes in the garage. Despite being scared, Rena takes Gigi's gun and orders Johnny to turn off the car's engine, leaving the guy with no choice but to comply. Gigi punches him in the face and gives the car keys to Rena and that's when she notices the man on the ground. Rena says the guy is Mr. Updike. Glenn's cricket coach, Gigi tells Johnny to take the belt off Updike, which Rena uses to restrain the criminal. After that, Gigi forces him to get inside the trunk and gets ready to clean up before escaping. But when Rena tries to stop her, she knocks out the girl in the living room. The three other cranes have managed to free themselves using a knife and pencil and come at Gigi. When she arrives, rendering her unconscious, they don't waste time and deal with Johnny next with Hemi repeatedly hitting him in the head with a crock pot. Hemi then takes Gigi to the basement which serves as a butcher room. Rena follows him and sees Polly's body hanging from a booby trap but she tries to ignore it and looks at the severed human body parts around her. Hemi prepares Gigi's body to be eaten about how he killed an eighth secretary too using a chain. Hemi hangs G's body upside down before getting ready to take Polly's organs. He casually discusses with Rena, the Solomon Knights, the followers of the prophet Solomon Smith. He says Solomon had a vision from God that if his followers took the life force of others, his kingdom would flourish. Hemi also adds that God told Solomon that eating human flesh and drinking their blood would make his family strong. Meanwhile, G.I.I. regains consciousness and but Hemi proudly states that ritualistic cannibalism dates back to 1000 BC. At the same time, Glenn drops Johnny's body from the stairs and takes up Dyke's body there too. Hemi then asks Glenn to help Margaret in the kitchen leaving Rena in disbelief that the boy has been influenced by their father later on. The cranes sit at the table for dinner, but the doorbell suddenly rings. So Rena answers the door and finds her friend who has a crush on her Sean standing outside. Rena quickly tells Sean to go home, but Hemi invites him to join them. However, Sean is vegetarian and politely refuses to eat. But the cranes except for Rena urge him to try some of their food. Sean takes a bite of the meatball and notices an ear on his plate instead of explaining. Hemi simply tells him he's eating a cooked index finger. So Rena pulls Sean and leads him to the door. Unfortunately, Glenn and Hemi stop them from leaving and Rena fails to help Sean as her father and brother restrain him in the basement. He gives Rena a butcher knife and instructs her to chop Sean's head off, threatening to have her kill Gigi instead. If she doesn't comply, Rena can only cry and apologize to Sean but Hemi gets impatient and soon kills the boy himself afterward. Hemi tells Rena, the dead people in their basement will carry them to a greater destination. He then goes upstairs upon hearing the chopper and Glenn explains to Serena that there's a golden glory waiting for them. Exasperated, Irina slaps Glenn and tells him to snap out of it causing him to tie her up and hang her using a chain outside. Inspector Jimmy arrives with the SWAT team and orders his men to surround the house. He then calls the crane residents so he answers the phone and pretends to be Polly saying he'll kill the hostages if they mess with him faking an ancient accent. Hemi demands to have a chopper in one hour. He also asks for his professorship which confuses the inspector before he ends the call. Irritated Jimmy calls again and tells Hemi he's not getting a chopper in the basement. 
Rena and Gigi swing toward each other while Glenn chops up Sean's body. Luckily, Rena manages to free Gigi by biting what's restraining her. Gigi carefully gets down and lowers Rena too on tying her before getting a knife and turning off the radio. Rena tries talking some sense into Glenn and urges him to come with her. But her brother refuses to listen and goes upstairs feeling bad for Rena. Gigi promises she'll never touch Glenn or Margaret. Sadly, she wants to kill Hemi for, she knows he won't leave Rena alone as if on cue. They hear Hemi and Margaret fighting and the two only stop when Glenn informs them he messed up. He doesn't get mad and says he knows Glenn will make it up to him, taking knife and asking his son if he'd die for him. Glenn only wants to make his father proud. So Hemi stabs him and cuts his chest open, taking his beating heart before eating it. He believes it will make him immortal, but he also needs to drink the blood of his untouched daughter upon seeing and hearing everything Rena realizes. That's the reason why she was sent to a girl's boarding school refusing to lose her other child. Margaret distracts Hemi by telling him she had an affair with another man. Then she attacks Hemi with rolling pins and as they struggle, Gigi tries helping Margaret by coming at her husband with a knife. Unfortunately, Gigi ends up chopping off Margaret's arm giving Hemi a chance to hit her in the head with a rolling pin. After that, Irina reveals she's not pure, but Hemi thinks she's lying and grabs her slits her neck and drinks her blood. At that moment, the SWAT team throws a smoke grenade inside the house while Gigi stabs Hemi with two knives in back. However, Hemi simply removes one of them proudly declaring he's the reincarnation of Solomon Smith. At the same time, the SWAT team starts breaking into the house. So Hemi goes upstairs to hide, Gigi covers the smoke grenade with a curtain and takes a knife also covering her nose with a towel as she looks for Rena. But a dead SWAT member suddenly drops on her allowing her to have a gas mask upstairs. Hemi takes the other knife from his back and thinks he didn't drink enough of Rena's blood. Hemi then finds Rena and stabs Margaret when she tries to defend their daughter telling the woman he will never die looking for a place to hide. Rena takes a gun from a dead SWAT member and crawls around the house. She's unaware that the cops have managed to place the camera inside their home and they see her turn on the gas in the kitchen. Rena eventually faces Hemi but she hesitates to shoot him instead. Rena shoots the stove and causes an explosion. Luckily member grabs Rena and jumps out the glass window leaving Hemi to die. The SWAT member takes Rena away. But as it turns out the person who saved Rena is actually Gigi in disguise. The girls then kiss as the house explodes and they check the debris the following day. But a hand suddenly grabs Rena, which means Hemi has survived the explosion or he's actually immortal. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications and leave it like, it really helps the channel out.